All right, the time has come, guys. We are in Ontario, and it is time to bring Topsy home. Before now, this thing was not a truck, as far as the government concerned. It's something that looks like a truck. It's something that drives. But we needed a VIN number and registration before we could drive it on the road, which means that we had to submit an absolute mountain of paperwork on all the parts on the truck. We had to do a bunch of testing. But we have done that. The government has given us a VIN number and registration, which means that we have officially made a truck that can be driven on the road legally. And that is a huge, exciting step. It means that Edison Motors is now officially a truck manufacturer. We now have registration. I could take that registration and I could sell that to somebody and they could drive it on the road, which means that yes, we are now a manufacturer that can sell the truck and that is a huge, exciting step. Okay, so you guys know the problems we had shipping that headache rack that's on the back of Topsy when we were shipping it out of Flow Drawlic. And we gave it to a company that then gave it away to another company that then lost it and broke down and didn't say it, just a nightmare. We made sure to go with nothing but professional companies for shipping Edison stuff. And this is an example of a company that when we talk to them, these are the kind of guys we want shipping the trucks. And it's because we got drivers like Stefan that work for it, that they bring that professionalism into moving the product that we can actually trust. When you're dealing with companies, it's all about the image of what that company is. Like the truck comes in here, it's a professional looking truck. It's good looking iron, comes over. Stefan, first thing you notice, like he comes over, bold line on the t-shirt, company clothes, well-dressed. It just, it makes such a big difference. The industry yes. has an image problem sometimes. Yes. And you yes. don't know who you're getting. And like, I don't like brokering loads out because now that we learned that, that even though we reviewed the company, the company seemed okay. They just gave it to somebody else. This is one of those ones where like, hey, that's not gonna happen. I wanna know that the driver's gonna be a good driver because we're, we're trusting a million dollars of research and development on the back of this truck. I wanna know who's driving it. For, for me as a driver in a small company, we actually talk to the shop. We talk to the maintenance guy and they listen to us. I'm, I'm really treated as a, as a person, as an individual and not as a number. It's just, yeah. My, actually my dispatch, she used to work for a big carrier and she still has that little tag where her number is on. And that's her reminder of, I never want to be a number again. It's just, those are the little things. Just, yeah, we can talk to each other. We're humans, you know, not, not just a number. Well, I mean, it's always hard to run empty, but at least I'm never running empty. For $30, I make a lot of people happy, and especially the kids, they just love it. They just love it. So the guys inside are just finishing up some last minute details on the wiring. Always down to the last minute with us, and then we're going to ship the topsy off to Quinnell get the VIN number stuck on it, license plate put on it, and I think we're gonna load her up in the morning while they're finishing up the wiring, and we're gonna go to Medieval Times, watch some nights jousting or something cool. Should be a fun time. Our wiring harness on this truck used to look like this. This is what we built when we first built the truck. This was the test prototype harness. This is assembly to get it working, to get it doing what it needs. We can't sell this, so we upgraded the wiring harness to this. This is similar to what you find on like a Tiger Cat skitter, a piece of heavy equipment. It's a service panel that's easy to work on. And more importantly, this newer version of it, we can actually produce and manufacture at scale. We can send it off to a wiring harness manufacturer that can pre-build this, let us ready to go. That's how you scale production. All right, Stefan's got Topsy all loaded up on his truck, so he's gonna head off to Quinnell. I'm gonna hop on a plane and we'll go meet him back in BC.
All right, we just got Topsy dropped off at Clawson Equipment here in Quinell. So next thing is we're gonna go through, put the VIN number on it. Uh, we're gonna go get its MVI with motor vehicle inspection. And once we do that, we can put the license plate on it and we can go driving as soon as we fix that wiring issue still. We still have think we have fried the TCU, the traction control unit, uh, which we got to put it on a new traction control unit. And unfortunately, we got to do that before we put the deckle on, but we are so close. It's back in BC. It feels great. So how was it hauling Topsy? Well, I had definitely a lot of attention down the road. I heard it several times on the radio. Hey, that's Topsy and nice to see it in person. And everywhere you park, people come over, had a look. I was handing out some hats too. They, they were super excited about that. So yeah, no, it, was, it was a really cool journey and I enjoyed every mile of it, yeah. All right, so we are at Clawson Equipment here in Quinell. We got Topsy unloaded, put into the shop. The next step is we submitted everything um, to the government to go through and get our VIN number. It was a giant mound of paperwork that I took months to fill out of. All the parts we used in the truck, detailing them. The next step to get that VIN is we got to bring it to a designated inspection facility. That's here in Quinell. Uh, we're going with that because Maz actually signed up to be an installer for the Edison kit. So, of course, we're going to bring our truck to the installers and the people that want to learn about this stuff because it's a great first chance to learn about it. And he's going to go through it as a designated inspection facility and make sure it's all mechanically there, mechanically sound, and then we can stamp the VIN number on, right? Yeah, no, truck will be good to go. We've been going through it here for a little while. Haven't found anything major. I mean, a couple nuts and bolts. Other than that, this truck is very well built. We got... Cool. Uh, CBSE invited throughout British Columbia. We've invited them to come to the shop, help us go through this inspection. Uh, CBSE sure is DOT for the Americans. But yeah, you've invited CBSE to have well, a look. Yeah, I know, and then they'll come and make sure that Topsy can cross any scale in BC and it's not gonna have any problems. Which is convenient because the scale is directly behind the camera right there watching us. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, right behind them co-op tanks. So it should be good. We'll go through the list over the next few weeks, get her all flanged up, get the VIN number on it, and... Yeah, no, doesn't need much, and this thing's gonna be ready to go. Need some wiring issue fix. We gotta fix the wiring issue, but other than that, <laughs> oh, always something, always something. So Matt's been getting quite a bit of attention. People have been stopping by the shop, trying to get Topsy, check Topsy out, but I want anyone watching this video to know, I'm not posting it until this truck's gone. So don't stop by Matt's shop, Topsy's not going to be here. The video is coming out after. However, Matt's going to be a pickup installer, so remember the name anyway. Okay, so we've got the truck back in Quinell. Unfortunately, when it left Ontario, it was not driving because we've had this wiring issue. We didn't have time to diagnose it. Our theory was that it was a TCU computer here. We have put in the spare computer and still have the same fault code. So the fault code is not in the computer, which means it's probably in the wiring because wiring this thing be changed so what we've done is we've put in the old wiring harness and we're going to see if the old wiring harness works and that'll tell us whether it's this harness or not he requested absolute silence we're on the phone with flow Eric errors going through the computer error messages so he's going to be watching this in real time to see those error codes come up while i'm running everything so okay well just told me to be quiet while we're on the phone Screw it. Let's just let's just do it. I'm gonna open up the I'm gonna open the service tool. I can just show you on my phone here. Okay, so Chase, turn on accessory power again. Accessory. Yep. And if you want to, please put it on the um, just 23 volt. I want to see the 24 volt system. So go I/O. Yep. Or just just keep your eye on it. Yeah. Okay, 25 volts. Okay. So we're connected now. I'm gonna go on axle test. First act. There's, no, there's no errors anywhere there. No that's errors right. on there, but that makes sense. We only replaced the wiring harness for one. Yeah, exactly. And the that's other right. one's showing zero errors. So it's now on the shifter, which is a new shifter. Like they put in a new switch. It might just be an issue with the I new switch right. that they, we put in. It was replaced as part of the wiring, so. Okay, fingers crossed. Yeah, what we ended up doing was um, we changed the wiring harness to see if that was a problem. I think it might be. Yeah. So we're just gonna play around with the software a bit and see if it works. Fingers so, crossed. There is two harnesses, one for each axle, like two groups of wiring. 
And what we've done is we replaced the wiring harness to one axle and not the other axle. And the fault codes were showing up the same because both wiring, the, the new wiring harnesses were made the same. This is one of the old wiring harness and we have one of the new wiring harness. So the old wiring harness now shows no fault codes on that axle. So before with the new one that was made, it shows fault codes, the, the old one has yep. it, so. Yeah, we'll put you back in drive. You want to turn the engine on too? Okay, I will start. Ready? Yeah, we're spinning, spinning, spinning. All right, we are getting really, really close. So we've got the motor spinning. So as we know, the wiring harness is only going to one axle. Perfect! It's wiring. We got her. Yeah, so we ended up giving the truck to Flow Draulic to work on for a few months. Uh, really stoked about it because they took this wiring that was pretty good. It worked, right? So the axles were spinning, uh, but it wasn't done the best way possible. Uh, so with their work, they ended up using terminal blocks and a really nice system. And, um, you know, it looked pretty, but when we hopped in the truck back in Ontario to pick it up, it didn't work. <laughs> so. Um, we spent the last couple of weeks just troubleshooting and thankfully uh, we finally got it working tonight. It was weird. We thought it was a computer that might've blown because the wiring we thought was okay based on pinouts, but you know, they told us it was the computer. So I ended up getting a computer to test. That wasn't the problem. So it had to be the wiring. So um, we ended up testing that today and thankfully we did find the issue. It was the wiring all along. So now for the next couple of days, I'll be rewiring the truck and uh, we'll get her working again. Yeah, so we're back here today working on the truck, trying to figure out some wiring issues. I got Brian here from Flow Drawlic and Len, and uh, so we got the dream team here. And I think we just found a few issues that we could solve today. A big one is we might have cross wires because connectors are, are the same, and then we could just do beep tests to confirm that, but I think we'll fix the truck today, which is really exciting. You know, we've only been here for five minutes, so fingers crossed. <laughs> Uh, it looks like the wiring was correct. Just a few pins were probably stuck in wrong. So um, it looks like everything's working now. I fixed axle two, now I'm trying to fix axle three. I fixed it. Axle three is online. I'm gonna turn it off and then I'll do through the sequence and we'll see if we get both axles turning at the same time with the diesel engine. Yeah, so we had a major breakthrough today. It's crazy, but we just literally took connectors out, forced cables into them, put them back in, and now the truck works. All the wiring is fixed. So we now have a working computer for the transmission. Yeah, it was basically uh, one pin in the, one of the connectors for the plus one uh, control system. It just wasn't quite engaged in the connector. So just gave her a little push, got her into place, and now it all works. 